When you ask most structural engineers about timber being used in a structural sense, we're often limited to a small residential construction. But even today, there's been towers planted up to 40 storeys in the heart of Sydney. And this is the Aslan's headquarters and if constructed, will be the tallest timber construction in the world. The reason why we think about those small residential construction is because most engineers have misconceptions that timber is a weak material, that is bad under fire, and also some of those concerns about heavy logging causing mass damage to the environment. I'll be going through some of these and why timber will be the next building revolution that the world will see. So let's get into it. When you look about sourcing timber, you need to make sure that you're acquiring it from a sustainable forest. So what do they do in sustainable forests? It means that there is more trees planted than are cut down. And most reputable producers will actually source timber this way to make sure it's sustainable. When we're looking at the carbon savings that we can get from a timber construction, there's actually as much as a 60% reduction in the carbon emissions going into constructing the timber building. And you can actually store up to 400% more carbon in the structure from the timber that's been put in there. So it doesn't matter how much you put into the concrete mix, you can actually have a lot greater savings in that carbon. So leading towards that zero footprint that we're aiming for. You see, if you find this content on timber enjoyable, don't forget to nail down that like button. Not only does it help me out, but it also gets it out to more people. Now let's keep learning about the benefits of using timber in your construction. So most timber, when it's been used in a construction sense, has already been kiln dried. As timber, it's wet, so it can even swell or move quite a lot. So before it actually been put into your house, it's generally gone through a drying process to eliminate any of the bugs that may have been in it, but also to reduce the moisture content in it to make sure it's stable in the long term. You see, back in the day, they used to put timber frames out there before they were drying it to let it dry over a series of months. But with the speed of construction now, we do not have that luxury. When we think about timber as a construction material, most people think of it as a weak material. However, when you're looking at a strength to weight ratio of timber in comparison to either steel or concrete, it's able to beat steel by about 20% and it can beat concrete by four to five times of an unreinforced concrete mix. So this means we're able to build higher on areas that may have limited weight. So for example, they're built over a tunnel, so we can build up a lot more stories, getting a lot more sellable area. If we're extending on top of a building, Putting a timber construction on top allows you to go higher than you would be allowed to in concrete. So there's many benefits of proposing a timber option in certain circumstances. But also realize there's a large variety of timbers. You've got your hardwood timbers and you've got your softwood timbers as well. And they come in a great variety of strengths. So how do they classify the strength of materials? Well, there's really two ways they do it in Australia. There is classifications based on the species. So whether it's a hardwood or a softwood, it will make it sit in different areas in there, but they also grade it further than that. So they do this by a visual inspection or by machine grading. So what a visual inspection is, they go and look at the different defects in the material, the knots, the cracks, and classify it into different subcategories to get different strength ratios. Where the other method is machine graded pine, for example, is where they have a machine come and bend it and they're able to get a Young's modulus based on that bending and classify it based on that. So typically, visually grading is considered to be less accurate. So there's normally more safety factors put on that type of material. Where the machine grading normally gives you a higher capacity and there's more confidence in the strength that you achieve from that material. What type of spend depth ratios can you achieve from a timber construction? Well, joists can be somewhere between span on 24 where you can get span on 10 or span on 15 for those timber beams supporting those floor joists. So as you can see, this is even rivaling some span to depth ratios that you can get out of steel. How, so how does timber behave in such events as earthquakes? We can outperform its brethren out of concrete or steel. If we look around the world, we've got some of the oldest buildings still standing up in the most highly seismic areas are built out of timber. So why is this? As we were saying before, it is a strong material but also bends and flex, allowing it to dissipate some of those earthquake forces, making it ideal in high seismic areas. But really where timber comes into its own is the manufactured products that people are building out of it. These come in a different series. So you've really got cross laminated timber, which is little sheets of timber laminated together in different directions, or you have your CLT, which is really the big game changer here which is those series of those lumbers side by side stacked cross laminated across each other to create really big elements 
that are strong both in two directions, making them perfect for either flooring or walls. And the best way to think about CLT products is more like those precast elements. So you can already have doors pre-cut out of them. We can already have windows pre-cut out of them. So allowing you to quickly put the structure together, like a big mechanism, the walls come in, they drop down, you put the floors on and keep going up, allowing for quick turnaround times. Or if you're looking for other elements such as beams or columns, you also have another product called glue lam. So it's similar to your CLT, instead of cross laminating it, they laminate it all in one direction. So that makes it perfect for such elements such as columns or beams. Also due to the lightweight strength ratio of timber, it allows you to achieve such things as prefabricated cassettes where they've got a series of floor joists stacked up. They put the flooring on top and they also put services in there. So they need no side time to put any of the services or the flooring down. So it comes prefabricated, already good to go where it just drops down into place. Other things you may not think about when you think about timber is what it actually does on site. And you'd be surprised when you go to a construction site being built out of timber, how quiet it actually is. So this is a great benefit if you're constructing in the urban area or somewhere where you need to have a lot less noise pollution. But it's one benefit that you may not think of, especially to the local environment, is the reduction in the noise pollution from site. Timber is often misconstrued as a bad material under fire. However, this is not the case. So when we're thinking about concrete, what, how it behaves during a fire, it'll actually spall off. When you got steel, it actually reduces its strength as it heats up and actually sag. However, timber will actually have its only outer edge char off. There's actually predictable rates of charring where a softwood can burn up to about 0.65 millimeters per minute and a hardwood can be as low as 0.5 millimeters per minute. So we're able to oversize the structural elements to resist the major fires. And even in the right circumstances, you can build it so it's self-extinguishing. You can have a big enough element on the outside where it all chars out and essentially puts itself out over time. You can also do other things like soaking a fire retardant into your timber structure. When you think about that flammability point of view, your CLT structures is a big block of timber. If you put a flame against the CLT building, it just won't burst into flames. It takes quite a lot of effort to make sure it catches fire. And even when it does, as you can see, it takes a long time for that building to degrade to the point that it'll collapse. Another added benefit of using timber during construction is if there's any need for modification. So when something comes to site, such as a prefabricated element or a steel beam, it's really hard to modify it to suit an area that's slightly off. However, your timber elements can be easily modified to fit whatever space you need. I'd just like to take this time to give a shout out to my patrons that are helping support produce my content here today. And this is Gong Ye Shung, who joined the group last week to join Ben Sam. So what do you get up by signing up to Patreon? You get to have more access to me and some future Q&As that I'll have as members only. But if there are looking for other ways to support me, I actually have even Amazon links down in the below description. I will be producing future videos around timber design and some key aspects. So don't forget to ask questions in the below description. And if you haven't at this point, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.